guys, it's Jessie V. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about some very strange and almost creepy rules that people had to follow in the 1800s and early 1900s. Now you guys know I am obsessed with anything vintage and weird and creepy. I have done so many videos about that sort of subject. And when you guys hear some of these crazy rules that people actually had to obey, it'll just blow your mind. Now, before I get started, I have a very exciting announcement to make. About a year ago, I told you guys about the Yana movement that I was doing. It's basically where I encourage schools to start up a Yana group. Yana means you are not alone. Just to include people that feel left out or lonely. Now, so many schools around the world actually started these groups, and I said that at the end of the year, I would be announcing the winner. Now, it was so difficult for me to just pick one school because all of you guys are rock stars, all of you guys have done so much. But one school has just gone above and beyond, and that is Florence Elementary, specifically the grade five class. They have all done such an amazing job, and they've had a really amazing teacher to guide them. They have been nicknamed the Kindness Crew, which I love. And I just wanna briefly let you guys know some of the things they did. So they've created a Yana Pledge to be respectful and kind to everybody. They have created a giant chain for school with inspirational messages. They have brought so many students together by encouraging them to try out for the school musical. They basically reached out to people who wouldn't usually participate in things because some people really do need more encouragement and they wanna feel included. They've had school district board meetings to talk about the Yana group. They have a kindness corner. They've done skits and discussions on kindness. So they've really worked so hard this year. I am so impressed. You guys really are making such a huge difference. So congratulations for being the change. And thank you to everybody else who started a Yana group in their school. You guys are amazing. So let's talk about the bizarre etiquette in the 1800s and early 1900s. The first rule is that your husband had to be the complete opposite of you. So basically husbands were chosen based on how a woman looked, which is so weird and wrong. There are even some examples I'm looking at here. So basically if you had red hair, people assumed that meant you were hot, tempered, and angry all the time. So you would have to marry someone with either brown or jet black hair to even it out. Are you joking me? Someone with a thin, long face was encouraged to marry someone with a very round and plump face. A woman who had features like her father's had to marry a man who had features like her mother's. What? And a very hyper and talkative person had to marry a very shy and quiet person. People were also told to never marry someone who had the same eye color as them. That is just absolutely mind-blowing. It's crazy because they really believed that opposites attract, quite literally. And like you had to almost be balanced out by your significant other. And people actually followed through with this. Imagine like actually falling in love with someone and like taking them to your parents and your parents are like, Actually, you both have blue eyes, so it's not gonna work out. I'd be like, no, mom, dad, like, you're kidding, right? You're thinking about our eyes right now? I love him. The next thing is that smiling and laughing was considered rude. Rude. So basically, laughing was considered rude or inappropriate no matter where you were or no matter what event you were at. If you like laughed or even slightly snickered at something funny, people would be like, wow, she's so rude, she's laughing? That's not allowed. People were also told never to smile and if they had to smile, to only do it for a few seconds. And constant smiling was a huge no-no. Apparently it was better to keep your face in a neutral form so people didn't really know which emotion you had. There are literally pamphlets that say do not wear your emotions on your sleeve. We don't want to know. So it was better for people to look at you and have no idea how you were feeling. That's what people preferred back then. And that's why basically every old photograph has people almost frowning and also because it took forever to take a picture. But imagine going to an event and like smiling at someone like hi how are you and they're like wow that was rude. Did you just like curve your face at me? It would just be so weird to like go to like a birthday party and like sit there like 
happy birthday. <laughs> and like, well, you, you couldn't laugh. The next rule is that after midday, so after 12 p.m., you could not celebrate a marriage. It's not even like, okay, you have to have your wedding before 12 p.m. as a guideline, no. It was literally illegal to get married after 12 p.m. It had to be in the morning before lunch. So if I was alive back then, I definitely would be in jail right now because my wedding was at 5 p.m. Literally the sun was going down while I was having my wedding. <laughs> and it's bizarre, like I wonder why it mattered so much. I guess people like wanted to go home and have their lunch. Okay. The next rule is that Victorian women could not give their husband store-bought gifts. And also, a woman couldn't give a man a gift unless he gave her a gift first. And men literally had to choose between flowers, books, or candy. Those were the only things acceptable to give their wife. And once a woman got that gift, then she would be allowed to get her husband a gift, but it had to be handmade. She wasn't allowed to go to the store to buy something. She had to hand make it. So DIY came all the way back in the Victorian era. <laughs> Imagine having to DIY a gift every single time there was a birthday, Christmas, special occasion. And I mean, honestly, I personally love handmade gifts more than like store-bought gifts because it just means more to me. But that's a lot of work. And I mean, they didn't have Pinterest back then, so good luck, you know? Imagine it's Christmas and your husband goes up to you and he's like, Here, Josephine, I got you a golden necklace. What did you get me? And you're like, Oh, Tom, I went outside and found a snail in the backyard. Isn't it delightful? In all seriousness, though, it was so messed up how different things had to be for men and women. It's just not okay. All right, the next thing is that the umbrella you used said a lot about you. So, like, the umbrella you chose to take in the rain had a statement to it. <laughs> Umbrella etiquette was so important back then that a man wrote a book in 1894 called The Philosophy of Umbrellas. Literally a dude wrote a whole book about which umbrellas you could use and which ones you couldn't use, depending on like your status. Umbrellas were an indicator of one's social position and stated that silk umbrellas were for hypocrites, while gingham ones were for the decent and reputable. So that's like something to think about next time you're like out in the rain with an umbrella. What does your umbrella say about you? The next really weird rule says don't be too playful with your newborn. Experts advised parents to not be overly affectionate with their babies, even going as far as recommending parents not to play with them until they're four to six months old. And the reason they say this to parents is so they wouldn't spoil their children. I'm sorry, but just playing with your own child shouldn't be considered bad. What? And during my research, I literally found pictures of mothers walking around with their child in their baby carriage with signs attached to it that say, please don't kiss my baby or please don't say hi to my baby. And parents were also told to leave their kid as long as possible in their crib so they wouldn't be spoiled. It says it would bring like a strong character in your child. I don't know guys, that's not okay with me. The next rule is that you should smile while talking on the phone. The phone was a relative relatively new form of technology in the 1940s. And according to experts of that time, proper phone etiquette meant speaking clearly into the phone and adding a smile even though they can't see you. So literally, no matter who you're talking to, no matter if you're alone in the house, you have to have a huge smile on your face while you're talking to somebody, which is weird because smiling wasn't allowed before and now smiling's okay. Can they make up their minds? Anyway, so guys, those are all of the weird etiquette and rules I wanna talk about today. There's literally so many more more. Like I could make like 80,000 videos on this subject alone. So if you want to see more of this type of content, definitely give this video a thumbs up and let me know. But yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!
Ha, 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 ha.